I want to talk to you about, uh, about uh, politics and the political system. Um, it's, uh, it's something that I've worried about a lot over many years. I used to be a politician. Um, I'm, I'm still in recovery, but uh, I used to be a member of parliament. So uh, this is kind of like group therapy for me. So uh, thank you. Um, we, we heard a, a little bit Sabina talking about public innovation labs. I work in, a, in an innovation lab, and Jesper is going to be talking about um, uh, MindLab in, in a second. But what I'm going to talk about is how we can inject some innovation and creativity into another part of the policy making process, which is democracy itself. So thinking about some of the principles that Sabina were re referring to, human-centered design, how can we create a human-centered democracy? Because if you think about the way that we organize our political system and the institutions within it, political parties, elections, they were all created in the 19th century. And uh, that slide that Sabina showed us, you know, they're very much on the sort of hierarchical, linear, bureaucratic, uh, uh, they're not right for the age that we live in. And certainly, um, it's a creativity, host it's a hostile environment for creativity. You know, new ideas are seen as threats within the political system. So how can we change it? And uh, uh, we in Nesta are beginning to think about this. So it's also an opportunity for you to get, get into our minds and see the way that we try and think creatively ourselves. So uh, let's, uh, let's go. Uh, this is Nesta. Um, and uh, there's about 170 of us. Uh, the, the most interesting thing about Nesta, we're an innovation uh, foundation, so we're trying to inject innovation everywhere in, in the UK. Um, but the most interesting thing is that we are, we, about 60 of these people are researchers producing very high quality reports, etc. So there's a think tank. And the rest of us mostly work in an innovation lab. And so, you know, the principles that Sabina were referring to there, you know, um, s thinking and doing are combined within a single organization. So imagining and implementing are there in, in a circle. So we're bouncing off each other, uh, talking and testing, thinking and doing, imagining and implementing. And that's an important part of any innovation process that you need both within, within the mix. We also have an, a fund uh, as well, so we're able to take successful ideas and invest in them ourselves. So we're very, very fortunate to have an investment impact fund as well. Uh, I won't go through our greatest hits. Um, I mean, we, uh, we invest uh, and we've, we've managed to incubate lots and lots of different ideas across a whole different, uh, different sectors. Uh, we use challenge prizes. This is to solve the problem of antimicrobial resistance, a £10 million uh, prize uh, on that sort of global challenge. Uh, this is uh, the Mayor's Challenge, which was trying to create a competition around urban innovation or civic innovation across cities in Europe. Uh, this is people-powered health, so using the principles of human-centered design and putting uh, co-production or you know, uh, uh, people driving uh, innovation within the health system. Uh, and this is, we work in the arts as, a, a lot as well. So this was something we did a, a few years ago about uh, making the National Theatre in London available uh, through cinemas right across the United Kingdom. So it gives you a sense of the breadth of things that uh, we work on. Uh, and we, we use an innovation spiral, uh, which goes right from idea generation through the spiral up into scaling and systems change at the end. And you can see some of the methods that we use on, on, the, on the outer uh, circle. And I can talk to uh, some of you in the break about uh, some of those. Um, and that's just an example of, we try and work throughout the entire spiral on people-powered health. But I want to talk to you about, uh, about uh, politics and the political system. And you know, it seems incredible, isn't it? The way we organize our society, uh, we use technology actually, in, in democracy. It's called a pencil. Uh, it's a pencil, you go into a box and behind a curtain and every four or five years, you make a choice. Um, it's a kind of a, it's a one-bit democracy, you could say, yeah? Because usually it's a binary choice in most places in the world between one of two alternatives and you get to choose once every five years. Um, you know, you think about all the information that we're losing 
in that one-bit democracy, you know? Um, all the perspectives, all the knowledge in our citizens that is not being incorporated within our democracy. How, so my question to you really is how can we build a hundred-bit democracy? How can we build a kilobyte democracy? How can we build uh, a megabyte high bandwidth democracy so we can capture all the knowledge uh, amongst our citizens? Um, we've learned a lot about creativity. Uh, in all of our work, uh, we think about how can we create uh, a space or a culture which is supportive of creativity. And uh, I, you know, we've identified some of the key elements through our work. So one of the most important is time. You need time to incubate your ideas, to, to, to let them breathe. You need, uh, you need trust. You need uh, an environment where we trust in each other and we trust in ourselves. You need uh, openness, open, an open mind to new ideas. You need uh, playfulness as well. Uh, a sense of creativity and fun is important. Uh, you need an acceptance of failure and risk as a necessary part of, uh, of any creative process. And uh, you need inclusivity and diversity. Many, many I uh, different kinds of ideas from different people. So, you know, the good news is that we are all innately creative. It's, it's in our DNA. It's there to keep us alive, actually, is to be natural problem solvers. And so creativity is in all of us. So that's good news. Um, unfortunately, we tend to kill it, as we know, in, in a later life and in all organizations. And that's certainly true of the political system, the democratic system. Time, there is none, you know? As a politician, you're always kind of thinking about the next uh, election, yeah? So you don't really have time, uh, four years at most, if you, even if you're in government. Where is the long time for, lo uh, the, the, the opportunity for long-term thinking? Uh, trust, well, <laughs> there ain't much of that in the political, this is the Ukrainian parliament, of course. It's a picture that became very famous because somebody pointed out it looked like a Renaissance painting, you know, so the, the, the Fibonacci number there, you know, the, the golden ratio. Um, uh, Open-mindedness, well, again, not so much. I mean, this is where I used to work for nine years. This is the House of Commons, of course. Uh, those two sides, government and opposition, deliberately designed uh, by the, uh, like this. Uh, it designed it traditionally as a chapel, but when it was redesigned in uh, uh, the 1940s, uh, Churchill wanted it like this, and those two sides in the House of Commons are exactly a sword length apart, yeah? They, they are the enemy, etc. And it creates that mindset, of course. The physical architecture of the place reproduces this, this sense of opposition uh, to the ideas opposite. So not a great place for creative dialogue. Um, yes, playfulness. Politics... <laughs> Politics is boring, man, you know? I mean, it's full of people in gray suits with gray ideas. This is uh, David Cameron during the election campaign, you know, sent this poor child to sleep. Um, uh, yeah, r r acceptance of risk and failure. Failure, that, es ist verboten, glaube ich, yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, uh, I don't know, of course, uh, saying, no, experimentalism is, 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 is something we want to kind of root out of the political system. Um, diversity, well, again, not so much. I mean, you know, the, in the US Congress, 80% of the members of the Congress are men, 80% 80, uh, 80 of them are white. Uh, so not much diversity there. And this map shows you the ones in red are the constituencies in the UK um, that, that have uh, always uh, had a white man representing them forever in history, right? So it shows you the lack of diversity in, in, in the system. So, uh, so what are we going to do about it? So it's something that we've begun to think about as an innovation lab, and it can, you, this is a kind of an insight then into how we work. Uh, and we, we're just beginning, so this is work in progress, so forgive, for, forgive me for that. Um, so we, we've started to think about, uh, a lot of our work involves digital, so we, uh, we're interested in sort of digital democracy and these new tool to allow people to, to uh, use it as a participative platform. And so we've, we've used the spiral, the innovation spiral, and applied it very much to the, uh, like the policy cycle that we saw with Sabina just now, yes? So thinking about how we could design a digital tool which allowed every voice to be represented in the political system to create that megabyte democracy. And uh, we worked with um, 
Podemos in, uh, in Spain uh, on the, in, in building um, a version of uh, d digital democracy. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we were so successful, Podemos in Barcelona and Madrid, uh, and in 14 of the 22 biggest Spanish uh, municipalities, they won. <laughs> Uh, they won the election. So, you know, and what it was, was, was a crowdsourced manifesto. So they asked the citizens, Barcelona and Camus, Ahora Madrid, uh, asked the citizens, well, what are your issues? What do you care about? You know, and what do you think we, we should do about it? And it was a means of getting better ideas. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, that, uh, and similarly, we worked in Iceland and Finland on, on that, and that, and that work is continuing as well. You know, so Five Star, the movement in, 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 in Italy, is also using similar... Uh, tools. Um, meetings, we're thinking a lot about this at the moment, how we can create uh, more interesting meetings generally. We've all been in, you know, uh, this is a very creative format that we're using here, but we're thinking about it more generally, but we're, we're also thinking about how it applies to politics, because face-to-face -face is an important element of the political process. Uh, this is Olaf Palmer, who famously got up on a truck, uh, you know, in Gotland, in Almadalen, uh, in Visby, uh, one summer they, they they all go to Gotland in, you know, uh, in Sweden, I don't know, for the summer holidays. And he thinks, well, we're all here. Why don't I go up and talk to people? And that developed from, uh, into a tradition. And now, of course, Almadalen Week is, is a kind of festival of democracy which happens in, in Sweden. And it's been copied in, uh, uh, also recently in Denmark. They go to Bornholm now. Uh, the People's Meeting uh, started only five years ago. And it's now 60,000 people go to Bornholm. All parties, non-parties, all organizations, they're in the same space actually having uh, an equal, a horizontal dialogue rather than the sort of uh, the vertical dialogue. So we're interested in how you could recreate that. I know there was an attempt to do this recently in, in Germany, but how can you make it an annual event to change the, the culture of political discourse? And uh, we, we, we use Future Fest, which is our festival, uh, trying to kind of create that kind of space to reimagine the future. And that's the back of my head there, see. Um, and, um, yes, uh, and, you know, in, in many ways, the, the Occupy, this is, this is one of the Occupy uh, th things in America, and in many ways we could see kind of different ways of uh, deliberative democracy happening uh, there uh, as well, and, you know, some of them based on some of the ideas from Peter Sanger and Otto Sharma uh, and the ULAB process. So there's interesting things happening that we can do around meetings. Parliaments, uh, talked a little bit about this, so a lot of my work is about the uh, physical design of innovation spaces uh, for companies and organizations, you know, and we know that physical design has an effect. So, you know, when we compare some of the principles, you know, collaborative and open spaces which are flow, when we compare that to parliaments, you know, the kind of corridors of power, it's a disaster, yeah? So one of the things we're asking is, and this is, uh, our House of Commons is crumbling, that's a metaphor, but it's also true. Uh, so one of the things we're, we're, and this is the Georgian parliament, I think, yeah? Um, so one of the things we're, we're thinking about is running a competition to replace the old parliament, maybe turn it into a museum and uh, have something new which embodies innovation and creativity. And finally, uh, on elections, in the general election, um, this issue of trust, the, the public doesn't trust, don't trust politicians anymore, and that doesn't create a good environment for creativity. In the United States Congress at the moment, uh, uh, only 7% of the United States po po population has trust in Congress. This is the lowest ever, you know, it's a huge crisis. So, so one of the things that we, we, we did, because everyone believes politicians are liars, yeah, and that's, that's a diff difficult scenario then to cr have an honest and creative conversation. So we introduced a manifesto fact checker, so at least, uh, you know, uh, people could have confidence in what political parties were saying. And we also used a, a, um, a digital tool like a future tracker as well, um, kind of using Twitter analysis. Uh, in this case, um, one of the questions was um, the center party, the Liberal Democrats, were, you know, who were they going to go into coalition with next time? With the right or with the left? And we used Twitter to show that uh, most of their Twitter conversations were with people on the right. So they were, they were probably more likely to be in that camp. Giving people information so that they could be able to have a little bit more trust uh, in the political process because they had, uh, they had data, really. So that's uh, the beginning, really, of trying to, kind of, uh, uh, trying to inject some creativity into the political process. But we're here partly in the workshop to kind of get your ideas as well because we're at the, we're at the, uh, the beginning phase 
of trying to think how we use some of the principles that uh, uh, Jesper will be talking about now, take them and apply them not just to government, but also the future government, which is the political parties in opposition, help them come up with more ideas, better ideas, more imaginative ideas, so we can create the future that we want to see. Thank you. Thank you.